Hey guys, so this will be a quick video tutorial on how to use the TI-89 simulator, which is available free on any web browser. So first thing you do is you open your web browser. We go to the place where we type our URL and we type in TI-89 dash simulator, simulator.org. And then we hit enter. And it brings us to this screen. So we tap anywhere to get rid of the message and we have a working calculator. So this tutorial will be focused specifically on how to use the TI-89 simulator to solve electrical engineering problems. So we're going to have to change some of the default settings. So we go here to mode and we're going to scroll down to angle, to angle right here. We use the up and down arrows to scroll. Then we open the menu pressing the right arrow and we have a choice. So in this case, we're going to select degree. We can always change it back to radians later. Then we're going to scroll down to complex format. Right now it's set to real. So we open the menu using the right arrow. And for now we're going to select polar and we can always change it back. Finally, we go down to exact approximate, which is now set to auto. And we want, it, we want the calculator to output a number every time. If we leave it on auto, it might output an equation, which is not helpful for us. So we go here to approximate, we hit enter, and we hit enter one more time to save all the settings. So now the calculator is ready to use. So let's say, for example, we have a set of parallel connected impedances. And let's say we want to find the equivalent uh, impedance of these two impedances connected in parallel. So in this case, it's easy. We have two impedances. So it's just going to be the product over the sum. So it's going to be 50 times minus J30 over 50 plus minus J30. So let's go to the calculator and let's do that. So first I'm going to put in here 50 and it's going to be times and we're going to have minus. Now the calculator doesn't have J, it has I as the imaginary number and you find that I by pressing second and then we hit catalog, you see the little blue I. 50 times minus J, I'm still going to call it J anyway for the sake of engineering purposes. So 50 times minus J 30 and if I hit enter it's going to give me what that is in polar format. So when we had set the mode to polar, what that means is the calculator will always output a polar response whenever you put in a complex number. Now we can input rectangular form, but the output of the calculator will always be in polar. If we want to set the output of the calculator to be rectangular all the time, we'd have to go back to mode and set it to rectangular. But it doesn't matter what form you plug in to the calculator. The calculator will always output whatever the mode setting is. So anyway, back to this. So we did 50 times minus J30 and we're going to divide by 50 plus minus J30. So it's just going to be minus J30. And here we're given the answer in polar form. Now this is an impedance. It's in polar form. But let's say you wanted to know the resistance, like how much of this is resistance and how much of it is reactance. So we s press the up arrow to select the answer. We press enter to bring it back into the command line. And we're going to go to mode and we're going to scroll down to complex format. I have changed the size of my keyboard unintentionally. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we scroll down to complex format and we're going to set it to, by pressing the right arrow, we set it to rectangular. So we hit enter. So again, it doesn't matter what I input, the answer now will always be outputted in rectangular format. So if I hit enter, it'll give me the rectangular format of the answer. So in this case, it's 13.2353 ohms for resistance, and it's minus 22.0588 for the reactance. So that's great. We can do calculations in, you know, whenever we input a polar form or rectangular form, the calculator will output whatever we set the setting to. But let's say we're given, or we would like to solve a matrix. So here we have a matrix with complex inputs. 
So what we should do, and what we, the way we solve it, is we would put the matrix in augmented form, and then we let the calculator do the work. So this is the same matrix. Here we we're solving for voltages, and these are phasor voltages. And we put the matrix in augmented form. And I have the answer over here, but we're going to plug it into the calculator, and we're going to solve this matrix using the TI-89 simulator. So we go here. And we're going to want to input a matrix. So what we do is we hit the button that says Apps. And then we're going to scroll down using the down arrow to Data slash Matrix Editor. We hit Right, the right arrow, and it opens up a menu. So we're going to need to input a new matrix. So we select New. And here we're given this new menu. So the type of entry we're doing is a matrix. Right now it says Data. So we have to press the right arrow, scroll down to Matrix, hit Enter. The folder, it doesn't matter, it should stay the same. And now we have to name our matrix, that's what variables for. So we're going to name it just A, so we have to hit alpha A, whoops, didn't work, alpha A, there we go. So we've labeled our matrix A. Now because we're using, we have to enter it in augmented form, we're looking for a 2 by 3 matrix. So let's go back, we set the row dimension to 2. 2, hit enter, and we set the column dimension to 3, hit enter, and then we hit enter one more time to save it. And here we're given our matrix. So let's start entering the values. It's going to enter them row by row. So first one was 1, we hit enter. Then the next one is 0, so we hit enter. And finally it's, so whenever, uh, by the way I should mention, whenever you input a complex number in polar form, you have to put it in uh, parentheses. So this will be parentheses 120, second angle, and the angle was minus 15. Close parentheses, hit enter, boom. Uh, let me see something. Oh, we have it set to rectangular. That's why it gave us the thing in rectangular. Let's actually change that real quick. So let's go back to mode. We go down, and get rid of this, complex format, and we set it back to polar. Hit enter to save the settings. So we go back here. It's correct, but I just want it to be in polar form. So it's, again, open parentheses, 120 at an angle of minus 15. Close parentheses, enter. Boom. So now if we go back here and check, we see that it's in polar form. Perfect. So we go to this entry. This entry was a complex number. It's 0, 0.0. Oh, we have to. It's polar, so we have to put it in parentheses. So open parentheses 0. 0.00. I'm sorry, 0. 0.022 at second angle minus 26.57. Close parentheses. Enter. The next one, open parentheses 0. 0.0. 463 at an angle of minus 149.74 close parentheses enter and the last entry was open parentheses 6 at an angle of 30 enter so now our matrix is entered and it's ready to go so first you have to exit the screen so you sit you select second quit to exit the screen and you're brought back here to do the matrix calculation you got to hit second and then you hit math which is under the number five now we're going to scroll down to matrix hit right to open the menu and we're going to go down to select RREF which stands for reduced row echelon form we hit enter and then we're going to put the name of our matrix, which was A. So we hit alpha, A, close parentheses, we hit enter, and boom, we get our phasor voltages right away. So the first one was easy, it was already solved, but the second one is what we were looking for, in this case, which is V2. And the answer is 124 at an angle of minus 154. And if we check, it's exactly what we predicted. So this is how you would use the TI-89 to solve a complex system of equations, in this case a 2 by 2. 
One final example, let's say we're trying to find complex power. Let's say our voltage is given as 120. Remember that in polar form we have to enter it in the parentheses. 120 at an angle of 0. Let's say that's our voltage and our current is going to be 50 at an angle of minus 30. Well if we're looking for complex power, remember S is going to be 120, so it's going to be voltage times current conjugate. So if the current is 50 at an angle of minus 30, we have to multiply by 50 at an angle of 30, right? We have to conjugate it. So if we hit enter, it's going to give us the apparent power S in polar form. But let's say we want to know how much is P, real power, how much is Q, reactive power. So again, we go up, we select our answer, we go back to mode, and we scroll down to complex format and we set it to rectangular. Hit enter to save the settings and then hit enter again and boom here we have how much of it is real power, how much of it is reactive power. It's all given here. So guys this has been a brief video tutorial on how to use a free TI-89 simulator found on any web browser free online and thank you for watching.